this is a regular meeting of the Public Works Committee of the RTM. It is September 12th, and we are starting at about 8.40 this evening. 7.40. 7.40, thank you. Uh, let the record reflect we do not have a quorum. We have 7 of 15 present. Any items uh, requiring a vote will be deferred until we have a quorum or deferred to another meeting. So with that um, on the agenda uh, for discussion is a picking up the work done by the folks who are focusing on the pedestrian infrastructure advisory committee follow-up effort. And everyone here will remember that there was a substantial follow-up work done. Um, Rolf, you'll correct me on the timing, but it, very early in the session. Uh, and I think it actually well, it started was a, it last was a, session. It was about this time last year. Here we go. Here's when the topic forum. first came up. Thank you, Yeah, it was at the beginning. Still one short of a quorum. Uh, well, maybe not no, the beginning of the session, but yeah, the beginning know, of the year. Yeah. Let me interrupt here. Let uh, the record reflect that uh, the PWC is now at a quorum, right. 8 of 15 <laughs> present. <laughs> uh, thank you, Frank, and welcome. Thank you. So sorry to be late. <laughs> no, no worries. We literally just kicked off. Great. Um, so with that, I'm going to suggest, we, since we never got going, we'll revert to the order of the, of the agenda. Um, you missed my welcome and thank you and hope you had a good summer. <laughs> thank you, Mark. I hope you had a great summer too. We, we, I did. Great. I did. I, I'm sad it's over. <laughs> Not a reflection on this group at no, all. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, so the first item on the agenda is um, uh, the minutes from the previous meeting. I had a look back. The previous meeting was May, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I circulated them previously. I don't know if anyone had any questions, comments uh, to make. <coughs> Bless you. If not, I'll take a motion from the floor to approve the minutes from the May meeting. To approve the minutes. So, oh wait, wait, before we do that, whose turn is it to take the minutes? Uh, who's? I think it was. I know Jeff, I did. Have a, you done them already? I have not. I think you're up. I hate to say it, my friend. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> That's the first order of business before. That was the first order of business. So <laughs> Jesus, there was tough. another reason. Give someone the movie prize. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Can I just ask, was I at the main meeting before I vote? You can still vote. You still vote. I can still vote. Okay. Yeah. You can still vote. That's being present is not a uh, okay. requirement to voting. So thank you for that. You you are in fact who was. Uh, really? Next up. I, super? I think you I, I volunteer. Who, who, <laughs> I always well, move in alphabetical job, order. Jeff. I put myself first so well, I get out of the way. Of and I went, and, I, then, and I didn't do it this year. But right. And then you said, well, let's do a reverse alpha. And so. That's why he's coming up late. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, no, all right. So. I know I did. <clears throat> the motion on the floor was to approve the minutes of the May meeting. We had a, a motion. Frank. Here, a second from. Okay. Richard. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, the second item uh, on the agenda is the bond resolution presented by at the Board of Selectmen meeting um, August, I think it was 8th. And it's an appropriation of bond, uh, it's an appropriation of bond authorization to repair uh, the Gorms Pond Dam for $3.3459 million. Mm -hmm. Wow. $3.3459 Yes. Oh, wow, wow. And so I'll just, I, it, it, I went through the materials that I sent. I recall there was the uh, summary predict, pr provided to the Board of Selectmen, the, the Board of fin Finance specifically, yeah, you've got that. <laughs> there was a, a memo describing the lease status. The lease status. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there was a technical summary of what actually is being done provided by Public Works, I don't recall who. So I'll just hit some of the highlights Probably and then I'll there. open it up for, for discussion and more granular uh, review. So. Um, by way of background, the town previously approved an appropriation of $160,000 uh, for the design and, and the survey costs associated with this project. The town is now seeking to fund and authorize bonds for, total, for the total project in the amount of uh, 3.185 additional, 3.3 million one hundred eighty-five thousand nine hundred dollars I'll stop uh, rounding. Getting to that total appropriation I cited earlier. Um, the cost of, to repair uh, Gorham Pond Dam includes design, uh, stone dam repair, sheet pilings uh, for dewatering, uh, concrete topping and slab replacement, replacement of a portion of the dam soil core, surveying, tidal wetland delineation, soil testing, alterations, repairs, improvements, 
as well as engineering, architectural, administrative, and of course is the, the printing and legal costs associated with the financing. Uh, in lieu of taxes, the appropriation that's being approved is also being combined with um, uh, approval to issue bonds. I'm going to defer on the more technical explanation of the bonding. Uh, F and B is lead on this for this group's mm -hmm. benefit. We are secondary, so I won't step on um, Mr. Davis's toes. I'll let him elaborate as to why both are being the appropriations being approved as well as the uh, approval for the bonding, and what happens uh, if those bonds aren't fully used. And I say that because in a moment I'm going to talk about how they're pursuing FEMA yes. uh, funding for this of up to 100 percent. We all know how FEMA works at some level. They don't tell you what they're going to reimburse until the project's done. I'll get into that in a moment. Can I just a short technical question? Um, if the town has, quote, accepted ownership responsibilities related to the dam for many years based on conditions of the lease, mm -hmm. so to whom, from whom do we lease the dam or the land under the, that on which the dam sits? We're going to talk about that in a moment. Oh, so sorry. I thought and and, and on knowledge. that point, though, however, on that point, mm -hmm. um, planning and zoning, Amy Zepatakis mm -hmm. and their committee are meeting actually right now and uh, looking at this item, focusing on that aspect predominantly as the okay. preview under. Uh, but I did speak with um, Amy and I'll describe, there's a memo in your package that Got describes it. that the, the assumption, the legal assumption is that uh, the town's responsibility continues as it was described under that lease, even though the lease <coughs> has not necessarily been extended. So I'll elaborate on that in a moment. Sorry to interrupt. No worries, no worries, but we're gonna to get to that. <clears throat> so there was a, a public works director memo dated uh, August 12th that delineated some of the following. The Gorham Dam Pond is located to the Rings End Bridge and impounds the river water from Stony Brook, Goodwives River, and the tidal waters of Long Island Sound. I actually didn't realize it had both those rivers flowing into it. Mm -hmm. So the background here is back on 2021, September 1, her, uh, Storm Ida caused damage and it required these repairs. The damage was compounded, which I found fascinating, by the storm hitting at low tide. Did you know that? No. Yeah. Um, I didn't either. And so I guess that is particularly bad because the front of the dam is, is exposed at, at a low tide and the, the violent waves, I guess, contributed to the, to the um, the damage. Um, t uh, let's see. The town did emergency repairs in-house using using staff, and a DEP permit was issued for those repairs. They immediately hired a consultant to do survey, design, repair, and assist with applications to FEMA and permitting through D DEP for the ultimate final repair. So they launched on all those e exercises as it was described like, immediately. Um, I touched on this a moment ago, but a share of the FEMA funding won't be known until the project is complete. Yeah, I and I, I think it's going to be quite some time quite some until time. after the project is yeah. complete. Yep. So there was some talk about how the Gorham Pond Dam and Rings End Bridge are landmarks in town and a symbol of the town. Uh, interesting, but what's more interesting is that the Rings End Bridge rests directly above the dam and maybe a risk, a risk without protection uh, of the dam from scour. Scour, I think, is the the water other. goes underneath and scours out the base of whatever it might be, causing weakness like and very possible failure. Erosion. That's yeah. essentially what happened at the uh, Hanson Road Bridge. Yep, and we'll talk about that. Yep. 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 Thank you. Uh, we know this: the bridge carries pedestrian traffic and vehicular traffic. It also carries uh, utilities serving like 130 properties. Mm -hmm. It's been in place for over a century, and the town has accepted ownership responsibilities, not ownership, but ownership responsibilities of the dam for many years based on the conditions of, of the lease. And we'll talk about the lease in a moment. So the, specific, the specific work to be done is temporary stabilization of the dam, preparation of the bidding documents, applying for the FEMA grant, which is uh, they're applying uh, for 100% reimbursement, permitting, and construction. The start date of the work um, is tentatively slated for around October 1 and should run through uh, April 1. From what I understand, 
there's some sort of limitation as to when they can and can't work. Um, there'll be some periodic interruptions in traffic as far as the two-way traffic having restricted to uh, alternating lanes. The description at the meeting was that that wouldn't be very frequent, but it would happen occasionally. Uh, let's see. Uh, the timeline for the project is nine to 11 months. The significance of that is under the terms of uh, the FEMA grant funding, it has to be completed by 1031 of 2025. Right. So, do the math, we're at the back, we're right slammed up against it. There was yeah. a lot of talk at the meeting about why, why we wait so long to get started. The discussion seemed to center around just a, you know, a tough bureaucratic process where in getting the information to FEMA, they're still getting the, the responses, we respond. So, we are where we are, but the takeaway here is that they're good to go, should be able to get it done. There's a breakout in the package. I'm not going to read the different how the, how the uh, $3.345 million gets broken out. You had it in your packages. Uh, mm -hmm. With respect to the lease, um, the status of the lease was reviewed in a memo um, August 16th. The specific cited, at least that I took away, were that the, uh, February uh, 1924, the town entered into a 99-year lease with members of the Gorham family. And Which at the owners, time seemed like forever. I'm sure it did, yeah. Yeah. yeah, who were apparently the owners of the dam. As part of the lease, the town became obligated to repair, rebuild, maintain the dam as necessary and support the town-owned bridge above the dam and to secure and support the dam against all damages from tides uh, at the town's sole expense. I paraphrased, but those were the, the, the those were my takeaways. Um, you have the full document in your package. Uh, the lease required the town to make good on all damages that may occur to the said dam. Further, the town must also keep the floodgate in good repair. The lease also gave the town the right to enter upon the dam in order to undertake the maintenance and repairs. Uh, the base language of base language in the lease is obligated to repair, and they start getting into specifics. The damage if by tide, if in part if the dam is attached to a floodgate, a whole bunch of uh, criteria in the dam. Damage occurs as a result of maintaining the bridge, repairs needed to support the bridge, the repair is needed to renew the floodgate, a whole bunch of criteria under which the town's obligated to do repairs. This lease, however, terminated in February of 2023. In the years leading up to its expiry, the town, town council endeavored to find, a, find the current owners of the dam by searching various land records, et cetera. Uh, they noted that a private investigator was hired to do some of the research. Mm -hmm. find. Um, only minor conveyances uh, to, to sh uh, for a very minor share of the dam were identified. In addition, uh, the search was complicated by lack of a decent description of meets and bounds, which I guess is the, the, logistic. the survey of the, survey the of dam. The, yeah. So the conclusion of this uh, legal review was that given the results, it is unlikely that there are it is likely there are no individuals or single entity that can renew the lease unilaterally on behalf of the owners. In the meantime, unless or until current owners representing a majority of the ownership in the dam gives notice that they want to negotiate and terminate the lease, the law will presume that the lease continues on a holdover basis from year to year. I think that's sort of what Thank you're asking. That's perfect. The only question is if we're leasing it, are we paying a, a, a payment to somebody? Like uh, I, I, I'm not like know. I know I'm not. I don't aware. know where you'd send the money. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, presumably, yeah. if you were sending a check to somebody, you'd figure out. That, that could be the presumption. There was no discussion of any. Well, at least was for a crazy amount anyway. It was like a dollar a year right. or something like. Right. That. So, so presumably, the private investigator kind of went down that. I would have thought so as well. Yeah. So those were my notes as far as the background, the, the, the repair being done, and then I knew the, the lease. Um, was going to come up. It came up in this committee once before. It's come up in, in the RTM. So with that, I'll open it up uh, for discussion. Uh, I already noted that F and B is lead on this, and, and Jack is going to explain um, <coughs> the FEMA grant process, the uh, the, the bonding. Now, from what I understand, um, high level, you need to make an appropriation. Board of Selectmen recommends to the Board of Finance, Board of Finance approved, and now it comes to the RTM because we're spending money. And I believe in the past, 
the resolution to do bonding would have been a separate resolution. How or why it was able to be combined is specifically what I'll defer to, uh, to Jack on, because it is combined here. But the idea here is that um, make the appropriation, we're going to have to pay for it, to use the bonds, issue bonds to, uh, to pay for it, and then when that FEMA grant comes in, if no bonds were used, uh, repay the, the reimburse the general fund. If bonds were used, could repay, could, could, could uh, I think either retire the bonds, which is not, I don't know if that's likely or not, or reimburse the general fund to keep the bonds outstanding and apply them to some other previous, previously approved project. Um, mm -hmm. The Board of Finance does not have to approve you to take those bonds and just use them for some other project. But if some other project has been approved at that time, whenever that is, and approved for bonding, I they use it. Heard that they can Yeah, that's what it, the, actually the meeting laid that out pretty well. Yep. Is that our new town clerk who was speaking? I, I didn't know who she was, but anyway, yeah. So, with that? I mean, this is... That's what I know. I mean, is this deja vu all over again? I, I seem to feel like I've heard this before in a previous meeting or something with you. Well, if you watched Board of Selectmen or Board of Finance, this was covered, but... Um, I, 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 I think the reason you may familiar be thinking about it, uh -huh. I think this came up when the initial 160000 for the yeah. design work. Yeah. There was a meeting yes. in, with the Board of Finance in particular yeah. Yeah. that went through this in somewhat detail with Ed yeah. and legal counsel. That was April of 2022. Right. So, so that's two, the only, over the two only, years ago. Now, I remember that memo, and I don't know if it was something that we circulated here. We would have, probably. Well, the only thing missing is the three point six million. That's <laughs> yeah. And in that meeting, in that meeting, the number was like one point two. Okay, <laughs> so two years later, here we are. And if Hanson Road cost almost one, you know, one point two or so, one point four. That was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Then, so, but yes, it, it, I'm just trying to figure out a. Proof I I believe it came through this committee. Yeah, um, that was twenty twenty two. Yeah, whether. That's when the yeah. hearing was with the Board of Finance. So at a minimum, we looked at we, it. Well, well, we voted on the 160 some odd thousand dollars for the design. Yeah. yeah. So that's why it sounds familiar. So that's where it sounds familiar, maybe, from that. Another place where it sounds familiar is, I believe, even prior to Storm Ida, we talked about dredging in Gorham's Pond for a few years prior to, prior to that storm. And there were logistical yeah. issues and yeah. cost issues related to dredging in Gorham's Pond, because obviously it abuts private property, because of the presence of the dam and all that other. Are they the thinking stuff? about dredging at this time? Unrelated to this. They're not talking about no dredging. I think they've been dredging several No, years. they haven't done that. No, they haven't done that because a lot of the residents have said that it hasn't been done. Got it. I'm just glancing here. But I know the dredging's been a frequent topic of conversation. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, it's definitely been a topic. Yeah, it's, it's part of this problem. You know, the Good Ride River and Stony Brook both drain into that pond. Yeah. So it's not part of this. Project. Is this similar to like the Board of Ed project with the schools and renovations and buildings? They came in at one price and now because we waited so long, mm -hmm. we doubled. So yep. that's the same thing we got going on here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very similar. So, um, my, well, actually, any, any more questions or comments? Because if I, I in, in terms of the dam itself, yeah, I, I don't see any alternative but to go forward to prepare the dam and there's the main reason in my mind is least is that Ed and he said this back in the meeting two years ago he said that you know there's no way an engineer could say that the two structures of the bridge and the dam don't have some codependency on each other to some degree uh, he mentioned on the side where the fish ladder is in particular he knows that it's definitely linked to the bridge okay um, so for that reason yeah, I, I would go forward with it because the, the two of them are linked. Right. And so we don't want the bridge <laughs> falling down because we didn't repair a, a dam. So that's that's the only reason why I would go ahead with the vote. In terms of the, the lease, I'm very interested to hear what Planning and Zoning has to say about it because, yeah, we're continuing a year-to-year -year on a lease that's expired. And I don't know. For we're some not reason. paying anybody the dollar that yeah, we owe. So I, 
it's like whether or not it could come up and be challenged at some point down the road. Yeah, that, that would be the only thing, you know. You could go that way, but what if someone steps up somewhere along the way and says, oh, hey, you know, of course they'd have to prove that they have standing, but. But the lease still says that the town is responsible for maintaining right. Right. both the, the bridge as well as the dam. So regardless of who owns it, the end result is the dam has to be fixed. <laughs> So, and it's our responsibility. So, we're almost, you know, tilting it. Damn if you do. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, for that reason, though, um, we're in public works. P, P and Z is assigned, and F and B. As you, you all have seen me, long, worked with me long enough to know. Um, if, if you all agree, we'll address, we'll address our, our conversation here, and we'll speak specifically to. Um, from a public works perspective um, on, on, the, on the project and defer to F and B to focus their efforts on bonding and these FEMA aspects and not, not kicking the can. If there's any objections here, we, we, we'll note them. But um, there was concerns about the status of the lease. Absolutely. I get that from the committee. Can I ask one other question about the project that's contemplated? Um, if we leave a magic wand and the project as expected is completed and we get Storm Ida Prime or Ida 2 that mm -hmm. comes again, does this project have any element of kind of future proofing or additional damage prevention so that we don't, like, storms are going to be, you know, increasing in frequency and intensity. We expect that over the coming decades. You know, we, this is clearly a critical piece of infrastructure. You know, is there any way that we can reinforce, I mean, I realize I'm, I'm, at the end of a process, so I'm not expecting yep. to change anything, but I'm hoping that there's some element of future proofing in this project. Yep. I, from what I read and what I saw, I didn't hear that addressed. I, I would expect. Um, yeah, it, it came up in that meeting two oh, years it? ago. Oh, yeah. Two years ago, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Ed said that, you know, because there was one particular member of the uh, finance commission that was. You know, questioning. Well, how much? How much of repair we, do we need to really do here? You know, can't we just get by on a minimal amount? And it made it clear that no, from an engineering viewpoint, you can't just partially fix a uh -huh. dam. You know, you, you have, have to have bring to, it to a certain standard. Right. He probably. says. So what? What we will do is, yes, there, the plan will incorporate uh, shoring up better with the abutments to prevent, hopefully, in, in a little bit better way, uh, the scouring that did occur. Okay, so we can prevent that, hopefully, from occurring again in the future. Um, but other than that, he says, I'm, I'm making it a, bringing it back to a serviceable dam in similar condition to what it was prior to when the storm event occurred. And that's, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but yep. that's pretty much what he said. Yep. Okay, but he said they were going to incorporate things to try and do better with the scouring problem, which was essentially what caused the problem in the first place. So there is something built in there to, right. to try and deal with. And you're right, thing, you know, I mean, we've, we've had an unbelievable rainfall this year. I mean, yeah. it's way over where the history has been. Uh, fortunately, it hasn't been in the crazy kind of storm like Ida and Irma were. Um, yeah. But still, it's, well, it's we're not. We're still it's, headed into it, the teeth of hurricane season. Yeah, right? we're still not over the hurricane season. And yeah, so I don't, I, I think, yeah, it's good that we're getting this done as soon as we can. Yeah. I'm glad you remember the, those details. I would have said. I, I only remember it because I played it back this, this afternoon. Okay. Because that, that's normally <laughs> our, our, our public works department's approach is usually to try to build it back um, as good or better. Or certainly, if a standard is required for 50 or 100 year, we know they always do that. Um, I'm kind of curious as to how long that bridge and, and dam have been that way. You know, I mean, is from the get go, is it, has it lasted since? hundred years? So has was it that lasted that hundred years? I think it's been rebuilt. It's been used twice. Yeah. It's been patched. It has been rebuilt. Yeah, it's, it's been dealt with before. I just, you know. I rebuilt, know. repaired, you know, depending on. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly in the last 35 years that I, I mean, I, I know that this is. In the, the last dam 35 itself, years? This dam itself, I think this is the second sort of major repair. Major repair. Project. Yeah, that I remember. At least one repair. I mean, I've lived in that area. Too. Yeah. I've lived in that yeah, area all my life. I don't. I, 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 I don't remember a repair there. So anyway, um, are there any other? I'm just going to move that we. Uh, um, so motion to move. Move. Is there a second to adopt? 
So a second yeah. from Frank. All in favor of yeah. passing this resolution? Tremendous. Unanimous. Thank okay. you very much. <clears throat> okay, the next item on the agenda is a uh, update and refresh and discussion uh, on the PIAC uh, activities. As we all remember, we have a team here that spent a lot of time uh, revisiting the, the original PIAC uh, process and recommendations. Did a nice job of distilling that down. Um, as, a, as a reminder, we have an uh, invitation out to the first selectman. Uh, John Zagrazzi has agreed to come and discuss PIAC with us at our October meeting, Great. Uh, at our regular meeting. And so in preparation for that, I reached out to the team here that had been revisiting the PIAC um, uh, project in the past and summarizing it and to put together some thoughts. The idea being um, I have provided Mr. Zagrazzi with a lot of the background information from last fall when I first raised this with him. It was a lot of information. Um, the idea here is to maybe consolidate uh, some of that uh, in focus points, but ideally for this group to come up with maybe two or three or however many questions um, to focus the discussion. Because as I read through even the summary, there's a lot there. And I found myself at the end asking, what, what, what's the ask here? What's a lot of information, a lot of takeaways. It can go in any, many different directions. So that's the idea here. So I don't know. Frank or Rolf or okay, Vinny, you were on that committee too. Or, so, or so yeah, yeah. I, chair, I chaired yeah. that Vinny and Rolf were yep. participants. And yeah. were you on the committee as well? You were yep. on the committee. Briefly. Yeah. Yep. Just Briefly. I think you were uh, <laughs> at a couple of cameos. Exactly. Yeah, Patrick was on the committee. So the whole committee. So we have here. the committee here. <laughs> so I guess. Not, not committee focus, yeah. uh, focus, focus team. Uh, I guess, that was, me. A, I guess that, was, that was a committee. Yeah, that was. I, I guess what I'd say just coming out of that process is. Um, we, you ask, you're saying what's the ask. I think the ask was to f put a greater focus and emphasis on pedestrian infrastructure, right, from both uh, financial resources and staff time. The perception w that the group had was that we have picked the low-hanging fruit, right, across town, and we are proud of that and grateful for that for, to the executive branch and particularly to Ed. Right? I'm always going to ring Ed's bell there. But uh, that it's time to tackle some of the tougher stuff. Right? And that, again, is the top of Hoyt Street, the number of places in town where uh, stone walls infringe on the pedestrian right away, things like that. So we really want to have a more, a greater commitment of resources, both financial and staff time. I think that's the ask. Uh, Rolf, is that fair? That's, that's one aspect. I mean, you know, I, I put together a, an inventory of numerous different categories, uh, pedestrian crossings, new sidewalks, signage, lighting, and um, I used Google Maps to, to look at almost every one of those yep. descriptive, whatever, intersections, whatever it might be, to see, you know, has this been done, has it not, and of course Google Maps isn't always totally up to date, but there's still a numerous Yep. listing of, of locations from that original report back in 2015 that as far as I can see still remain if you will open for discussion okay and I, I highlighted a number of these in this summary that I put together uh, hot so, spot so, hot so, so, so so maybe maybe yeah if you want to crystallize here, that in some yeah, way maybe part of the ask here is yeah of those list of priorities what role does that play in the annual planning? Right? There have been, what, eight annual budgets? Nine, how many right. times? Yeah, so 2015 think, to 2024, I, that's nine annual So I think the budgets. process that Ed follows for paving streets, Ed holds that very close to the vest. He doesn't disclose a lot where he's going to be paving. You know, he, he has a lot of autonomy from the Board of Selectmen. That seems to be working for everybody, right? Ed, Ed has been handling the sidewalk and pedestrian infrastructure in much the same way. And I think what we're saying is we want to accelerate focus on that and we want to make it a clearer like what the priorities are and how they're going to be addressed so the top priorities are There's a big first. distinction there, Frank. On the roads, it's a, generally a maintenance cycle. Correct. Right. And yeah. So Ed maintains that maintenance yeah. cycle, but like 
Ed is very cagey about who's going to get paved in what time and what year well, until things. I, I, think I wouldn't. I would, I'd refrain from saying. Cage. Sorry, the word I don't cagey. mean. <laughs> I, 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 I think Ed is, Ed is very harsh. Yeah. So, so I'm, again, my apologies <laughs> to Ed. Patrick, do you Ed, have something you want to yeah, say? It's very I, I, I think I don't think this is so much about what the Public Works Department is doing as much as, as I remember, and we can go back in the notes. But as I remember our initial discussions about this, it was more of a we did this we where we did this PIAC report back in 2015, and there was no follow through. And there was no continuation. It was done. It was check marked, put in a box, and then really, not nothing happened. But it, it, there was no commitment on the part of the selectmen uh, and the town really to follow through on this. And since then, we've had COVID. Since then, we've got. I think it's just sort of a, a um, an observation that there are a lot more people on the road. There are a lot more pedestrians, and we're now doing a number of developments in town that are mm -hmm. promoting more pedestrian friendly in those areas, but, they're, but the, the other areas have sort of been lost in the shuffle. Yeah. And so uh, if, I, if I were to define an ask without just extemporaneously here, it would be <coughs> a commitment on the, on the part of the selectmen in the town to recommit to what the original point of the PIAC was. And one of the reasons that we were really moving forward and trying to quickly finish that was before last year's budget cycle, mm -hmm. because the best way for selectmen to express that interest and in ongoing commitment is in, in a budgetary budget. way. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think it's what we're, my ask would be is a, a firmer commitment in and ask them to help define what that commitment might be. But mm. we got a lot more people on this, you know, running around on these streets uh, I, without I, sidewalks. I, I think that's probably well directed in that it is the Board of Selectmen that directs the different departments. Yeah. They, they direct the staff. So the, the points you're raising, I think, are valid, but the, the decisioning comes from. Ed works board. for yeah. the town, and the town is run by the Board of Selectmen. So, right. Yes. So, yes. Yes. So ultimately, you want to, it's it's their ball game. So, you want to try to give me. Well, well I, I'd like to see a specific plan. Absolutely. Okay, and I'd like this, and, and it's the kind of thing that you, you know you can't get this all addressed in a year. Okay. So I mean, I would think you'd need at least, a, in my opinion, a, a five-year plan. Okay, and and lay out in general terms, you know, what do, what do we want to try and go after and accomplish on a five-year basis, and I would like to see it detailed to the extent of, as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, the, the hot spot areas that are still with some uh, pending issues, um, the pedestrian crosswalks, that, there's a huge number still as far as I can tell that's outstanding that have not been addressed about, like 124 intersections that were identified for pedestrian crosswalks that are still outstanding as far as I can tell. So, is, so the question, so for a plan, plan follows a strategy and an objective. So yeah. really understanding is the strategy to implement, still to implement the recommendations of the, I'm posing it as a question, is the strategy that's requested to, imp, to implement the recommendations of the PIAC, part and parcel to that, might it have to be refreshed? Sounds oh, a lot different there, well, yeah, I, there's no doubt in my mind. I, I think, the, and I'm giving kudos to my colleagues who did a, a lot yeah. more work on this than I did, but I think we've reconfirmed that those objectives that were set out in 2015 were valid at the time and continue to be. So we revalidated that that initial study with maybe some. Yeah, I mean, slight enhancements. Understand something? I did not go out into the field. <laughs> no, 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 no. And no. go to all of these various locations and, and you know, like, okay, well, that's a lot of thought that went into okay. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Our, so the I said work as well as PIAs. Yeah, I would say at a minimum, those things that were identified back then that, as far as we know, still remain outstanding, should go through a review process and determine if they're still live issues and and work them into some sort of plan to have them addressed. Okay, so we've had two or three like pretty salient. Questions, Jeff. I, I want to throw between us. We can be able to cobble these together. Yeah, uh, I have. I want to. We're going to go listen to the tape. I got you. I want to throw in another kicker. Great Island is causing a huge amount of foot traffic from Pear Tree Beach to mm -hmm. yeah, and all around there. The foot traffic is 
it's is that even on there? <laughs> that, that little strip from Pear Tree? No. 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 Right? No. Because it wasn't a twinkle in anyone's eye at the time. Right. No, but that, that curve's always been that. It's way. always been that. That's always yeah, been that. Yeah, that curve's way. always but been the, there. Um, and there's always right. been foot traffic there. But I think you know. one of the questions is that a lot's changed in the life of Darianne since yeah. the PIAC conclusions yep. were. Yeah. Does the town administration, uh, how has the town administration incorporated them into its current view and current plan and strategy? Yeah. This, of course, includes building the Corbin District. Darian Commons and Great Island. Yeah, yeah that, that's sort of all the, that's several of the elements of a refresh. Right, right there. exactly. Yeah. These are things that happened that yeah. weren't in the, the scope of the PIAC. Yeah. Well, just remember, you know, isn't it next year we go through the POCD process again? Yeah. The plan of plan conservation. Of conservation yeah. So we're going to have another opportunity to, to really elevate yep. and, and really bring forward, I mean, it's going to take a little bit of a groundswell to make sure that that is, that the pedestrian infrastructure is then prioritized within the POCD to make sure that, I mean, that's, when anybody does any development in town, I mean, they're, they have to refer to the POCD first, make sure it's within compliance. So if, if that's a number one or number two or number three priority, it yeah. gets attention. Well, this, is the, this, is, this is great. Already there's at least three or four kind of points points to kind of get the conversation you know one thing I would also mention just more as a statement of fact about how this was done in the past is if you look at how the committee back in 2015 was was formulated there's a lot of different people from all different segments of the town there were people from real estate offices okay uh, of course planning and zoning was involved Susan Cameron um, Jeremy, Gin Jeremy Ginsburg, uh, head of P People Friendly Stanford, Jerry Silver, and public space planner Stanford Downtown Special Services District, Emily Provencia, Darien Police Department liaison, Legal Traffic Authority. Oh, and then uh, Sound Cyclists. Does anybody know about Sound Cyclists? Sound Cyclists is a cycling club, okay, based here in Darien. Oh. It is the largest cycling club in Fairfield County. Really? There's over a thousand members. Right here in Darien. Right here in Darien. And I have seen a huge group yeah, down there. Yeah, I've, I've seen them. They, they, so come so down, uh, Fitch, they come down Fitch they come down Fitch Avenue. The path. And they come flying down Fitch Avenue. Yeah. And you don't hear them. No, they're quiet. Okay, and then all of a sudden <laughs> shoo, 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 <laughs> they go yeah. flying yeah. by. I think I think one of the other elements of the inquiry at this point refers back to the budgeting process. So it's like, what's the plan and strategy and what will be incorporated into the capital plan in the coming cycle? Because now we're supposed to look at the full capital plan. And we have and a so, five-year forecast that we and, acknowledge we didn't approve, we acknowledge right. it existed. Right. And so I think, I think there's a, and now is when we want them looking at not only, okay, what's the conceptual plan here, but what's it going to cost over the next five years and what's the commitment to investing in a pedestrian infrastructure from a capital standpoint. So the timing is good. Right? To, to, to Even though yeah, up, I, I think spend just in time. Of last year just in correct. Time. Yep. <laughs> like anything else. Like anything else. <laughs> yep. So I'm thinking back to Great Island though. Maybe Great Island should be making should make that pedestrian problem at that part you know be part of uh, solved by Great Island uh, Park. Well, I know I know that Monica went before the police and said, you know, would you consider changing the Pear Tree Point Road? And I don't know if they would do this all year round, but certainly during you know peak summer, to be a one-way road. Yeah, I, I I know the discussion there is. And they put the arrow. It's not one way, but. The yeah, but I mean, the traffic yeah, just to out. In the summertime, that's the way I use it. I use it as a one-way road. Yeah. I go there yeah. and then go up and then come back down. Well, you're supposed yeah. to. Huh? You're supposed yeah. to. Yeah. I mean, there is that so no left turns. I know yeah. that coming it, out it, tell, it tells you yeah. not to make a left-hand turn when yeah. you come out and out of pear tree. I think that's like a 50-50 uh, I mean, probability. Beach. Yeah. Anyway, I, I fear we're heading down a rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Sorry. We're not going to solve that. we got to prep for the intention here. And I think if you want, you and I could try to cobble together. And we could listen to the tape. I point to the camera like it's the tape. But um. the other thing I would mention is, um, and I put, I put this in the, the packet that you all got, but there are there has been numerous grants 
Yes. And significant money. For a different towns. That have gone to all kinds of towns, surrounding towns, Stanford, Norwalk, New Canaan, New Canaan. Westport. Very big money too, some of these things. Yep. Uh, Westport got $450,000 uh, to develop a comprehensive safety action plan. City of Stanford awarded $17 million reconnecting communities and neighborhoods from the U.S. Department of Transportation. So my plan is to, to provide the same package that I recirculated here. I've already previously circulated some of the materials from last session that were provided here, the, the overview that um, the focus team put together. And then to forward a handful of uh, topics to kick off the conversation. So conversation. I'll offer up if, if John wants to go over any of it that the, the, the committee. I'm around. Can, you know, whoever would be willing to. I don't know if he'll want it or not. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the idea is he's going to. I want him to not come in cold, but to spend, even if it's just a half hour, 15 minutes, and have the background. Because what I'd like to jump out from the package or if we talk to him again, and I've already met with him once, is all the work that went into to this. And at the time, Ralph, I did share that all the different resources that were tapped into it wasn't specific as I handed him the package. But, um, because I don't think he was around. And act, he was around, but he wasn't active. He was in, or the finance. If he was, program. he was in finance, yeah. yeah. So he wouldn't have been focusing on this, um, to be aware of the work and the participation that it had. And so I want to give him the benefit of refreshing him on the background. Hitting with a ton of data is interesting, but if we could focus on the handful of items we touched on here, I think that'd be tremendous. So thank you for, for your input on. So do you think that gives enough yep. to work we'll, with? We'll, we'll, we'll put can, something together. We, we can, can keep circulate you busy. It. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. We'll circulate it if anyone has any comments. All right. And the idea would be to get it over to him two, three weeks ahead of the Yeah, certainly before. Yeah, I don't want to spring it out of yeah. him time. Mm -hmm. And that way, if there's any questions or feedback, mm. that'd be great too. Any time we can engage. Right, and, right. Um, hopefully it won't have the tone of that meeting right before this one. That was not good. Um, moving on, other items, focus areas. Um, I don't know if any of the focus areas have anything to report. Finance does not. Get my list of who's on what. I don't remember. Uh, roads and sidewalks. I feel we just covered that one. Sewers. No news. Well, they just met, and they just approved another adjustment to the sewer fees for next year. Is that partially related to that? Um, well, four hundred fifty thousand dollars. Is yeah. a big hit that came to them for the uh, main break at Stanford. Or apportionment of that break. Yeah, you know? right, know. exactly. And um, so it's a 6.23% increase from $7.06 per 100 cubic feet to seven fifty dollars per 100 cubic feet. That's the bulk of the uh, adjustment, though, is for that assessment? It's a, yeah, they call if it that assessment. were not the case, this flat. would be maybe 2%. Yeah. increase okay um, because they are starting to see some reduction in the amount of water that's going through the sewer system but then they're very concerned about the fact that we have new developments coming online and they will be adding water to the system uh, there was a hearing about this Thorndall yep I, uh, I saw that development yeah. that's in process what's the heart of the issue there the big 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 I get a big complex coming in adding volume yeah this is a system not sized properly. Well, the, yeah, they they the the For applicant that. hires their engineer, and the oh, town yeah. has their engineer. Yep. And Difference they, of opinion. They They're come together <laughs> about you know how much water flow and yep. peak water flow and the size of the piping and yep. maximum capacity of the pipe, so on and so forth. It gets very 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 technical, and then they come to a conclusion: can it handle it or can it not? Yep. Um, okay. In that case of the Thorndall, they, they concluded that uh, the capacity was there, so they got the approval for that project. But um, there are other projects that are coming along. There's a development that's already in progress on Sedgwick, but that's been approved. Yep. There's another one, apartments, a couple of apartment buildings going up near Trader Joe's. But this is more a function of the local uh, 
system in those areas can it or can it handle it versus Correct. the entire system. Correct. The I and I project is intended to reduce yes. overall and flow. That, to and that came the up goal. in the meeting. That came up in the meeting, the I and I they're they're I think finally starting to put together a serious uh, plan for chasing I and I. And uh, I think they're gonna implement that hey, thank you. Thank you. If if they can pull it together, I think they'll imp implement that uh, possibly uh, with the uh, next billings that are going to be going out in the mail, where they're going to ask everybody to sign off and with an affidavit saying, I guess I do not have any illicit connections to my sewer system. So they want everybody to be on record to say that they're not illicit. And then if they find that yeah. that's not the case, then they have the affidavit and they have the uh, ability to start to charge these people until they get it corrected. So, so Paige, I want to be fair to you. So, yeah. um, Frank got here, and we actually got to our quorum. Oh, so, so you voted. We sense. did, and so I, I know you stepped away from your family, and I feel awful you did that. Oh my gosh, no worries. Okay. I'm here. Hope it all works. <laughs> okay, I just want to be transparent. Oh, thank you. No worries. I'm glad you guys had a quorum. <laughs> well, we were late getting started, but we got we got it. So, but so thank glad. you. Several of you came from stuff, so thank you. Amazing. Uh, okay. Thank you for riding herd on this uh, <laughs> difficult herd. <laughs> Bunch of cats, I was <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. I got scratches. <laughs> um, where are we up to on that? Okay, thank you for that. Uh, okay. Mark. Dams and bridges, I think we covered that on the um, Gorm item. Recycling, anything, Paige, since you just. I mean, walk, any, anything new to report on? The swap shop is. Oh. going yeah um it's more crowded obviously with is that because the hours are condensed now yeah. that's what it is that's right that's exactly right yeah. yeah and i feel like there's a lot of more a lot more stuff there now it's a lot more active i don't know people seem to be very happy um i volunteered once um and it yeah it seems to go smoothly so okay has anyone heard any complaints uh, the only thing i'll share is um i purposely go on saturdays yeah and a couple of times it's all backed it's up. Yep. But I can't necessarily attribute it to anything specific. Sometimes yeah. it's someone you know, blocking yep. to go in. Sometimes it's someone blocking to go with the construction, the heavy construction stuff is. So okay. you know, I, I personally wouldn't attribute it in my random sampling to being a swap shop exclusive, explicitly. It's just a congested area. It's a congested area. All you need area. is one trailer trying to pull in with their, their heavy debris going around the back. Yeah. Waiting for someone to turn the stop shop, uh, swap shop. Yeah. The next thing you know, right. so the, the fellow in the guardhouse kind of bemoans he's, that a little bit. Yeah, I get it. He's great. I get it. Yeah, he's. He but yeah, I don't know the answer though. I mean, yeah, it's just a congested little area. Yeah. And I think Saturdays is the is the choke point. Exactly. Well, I was there today, and there was definitely nowhere to park. Um, but like, I I drove by, and there was nowhere to park. So I'm like, oh. I'll Catch it later. Yep. Nowhere to park again. So it was very congested today. Being yep. what was it Thursday? Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, and it was all just the swap shop was parked full, like yeah. double parked, really? parked all the way full. Mm -hmm. No, they don't have that much parking there. There's not much there. Yeah. There's really not that much. Well, there. if it doesn't turn out, that that was one of the issues. People were pulling in and parking for you know four hours, or five hours yeah. instead of. Yeah, that, so maybe that that should be. I thought we were going to. Limit the people that are minutes. working to park they, over by the public they are. works. Are they? Okay. Yeah. Well, so I'll, I'll, I'll it's a high-class problem. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. right. How long does it take to go through see if you want something in late 15 minutes? And they do enforce that. I've been there when they've been telling people, like, okay. hey, we got to enforce the 20 minute rule or whatever it is. Great. Um, so everybody that works there is amazing. The volunteers there. Terrific. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Coastal waters. Well, before you move oh. off the recycling, oh, recycling. Or, I'll wait till the yeah. business. But. No, we're, recycling is right there under this. Under uh, just a suggestion, and we don't have to pursue it because I know we're getting a little long in the tooth here. But um, <laughs> it was suggested to me, and I actually did a little, very little work on um, maybe considering doing a shredding day, mm -hmm. um, which is a sort of a might be both recycling as well as sort of a service to the town. Um, and, and I don't know if you can recycle shredded paper. I don't know well, why. Well, so I called a couple of the shredding companies, oh. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they claim that they actually do recycle it. Now, 
I don't know what their definition of recycling is and what yeah. you know, the, so the true ecologist uh, definition right. would be. But I think, I don't know whether it would reside in this committee to explore something like that. Um, to the extent that it might require some funding, um, it probably might reside in this committee as opposed to the sustainability subcommittee or group. Well, let me ask this question because I, I didn't know where you were going with this. Is the shredding like a security kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Or is because we have also a place to serves, papers. Serves multiple, yes, it serves multiple, yep. potentially multiple constituencies. Those that want to securely shred their stuff, um, it would certainly reduce the amount going into the into the recycling. Oh, they container. haul it away. Yeah, they haul so, it away. So there's an analysis to be done. How much <coughs> one truck it? can hold eleven thousand pounds? They can do yeah. three hundred and fifty boxes. Eleven thousand pounds. So what is that? That's five five and a half tons. Five, five and a half tons. tons. Assuming it, it all. Yeah, there's we lots of ton? variables on this. Seven. Well, that that's the mass I was trying to Not do. Much. What are we paying? Uh, we haven't one of our. Do you roughly know what we pay for a ton to haul away? It was just in the last contract. Right. $75. For the recyclables? For the recyclables. 175 yeah. That we're paying now. 75 from us. Up from us getting We were paid. Well, that's one component. Right. 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 The other component is we're providing a service to the yep. town. People are, you know, getting, uh, I don't know how many people have boxes. I'm. I, I've got a lot of boxes, so this was partly what mm -hmm. triggered it with, yep. in the dinner conversation. I have a box. But <laughs> it's just, I, again, we don't have to turn yeah. into a yep. full-blown discussion here. Yeah. Um, it yep. might be worth considering. Well, it's like the, um, do we still do the paint day? The hazard. The hazard is, yeah. yeah. We still do that. But if you've got secure papers that you want to get shredded, do you want to the dump time. them all into a bin? You want to make sure that yeah. they get shredded and you sort you of watch, watch them go away. You want to watch, yeah. Um, or into a, anyway, I think yeah, it might be worth considering. It's about $450. If we brought in a truck, it's $450. I'm paraphrasing here. So $450 an hour, mm -hmm. but that includes hauling it away. So if, if I can impose on you to just go back and let's look. We just passed the new pricing and embedded in the pricing for the dump, for the uh, uh, tipping fees at the, at yeah. the um, I went to facility work I couldn't find it. was the background on what we pay because remember we, we used to be paid for the recyclables now we now pay to have them all the way taken. and yeah. in that in that literature is how much we're paying now yeah. let's just do a quick analysis what's the net net if it's a couple hundred bucks out of out of pocket to do it then there's a basis for us if this committee decides it, it makes sense we have a basis for it's like a minimum of three hours that's a minimum call it a minimum yeah. of call it 1500 bucks Let's get our facts together yeah. and then see if it's something. So, if it's something that the committee thinks that we ought to pursue, I'm, I'm happy to put, put together some. Okay. If, if you do that analysis, we'll put it on the agenda to talk about next meeting. <coughs> uh, thank you. Uh, coastal waters, anything? It's there. The water's <laughs> paddle boarding, I know that. Paddle boarding. Waters are coastal. <laughs> I'm swimming, I'm paddle boarding, I'm. <laughs> Boating is around, and it's, it's great. It was a great summer. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and there's your coastal, there's your coastal waters report. <laughs> it was a great summer. What do you want me to say? The coast is still there. <laughs> yeah. this, can, can I ask, is, do we have, some, we still have people doing, like, uh, testing the water quality for? That I know, because yep. my daughter yep. works as a lifeguard, and okay. she can't wait till. Yeah. <laughs> for them to close it because of the testing. <laughs> Got yeah. it. Does she still get paid so for the she day? Can go she, play. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I don't she probably know. does. <laughs> um, so I guess my, my real question is: is how, how has the pollution been in the coastal well, waters? Well, I, I notice it's I notice it a, a sign about uh, uh, not allowing people to do many shell fishing or whatever. And I, I'm in Salem Straits, right on uh, right on Scott Cove, right. and. Signs have been posted in Salem Strait about not being able to. Anecdotally, yeah. I've had kids as lifeguards on and off for six years. This seemed lighter as far as the days closed, way lighter. And I, I don't know if it has to do with less very heavy events. Because while you said we have more rain than yes. historical definitely. averages. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know how many. But but we, like had some heavy events. Came in we had some heavy forms. events this yeah. summer. Yeah. Yeah. But also but not, anecdotally, not I don't know. It, the swimming was beautiful this yeah. summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't, nice. I don't have any statistics for you, just anecdotally. Okay. Okay. Department of Health. All right. yep. I bet they have records. Yeah, Health not yep. Public Works. Yeah. So next, uh, uh, I like to keep our meetings to an hour or a bit over, so I'm going to, uh, next up is Great Island, so mm -hmm. I'll provide a, um, an overview. Um, there's some information that was attached to the packet, which I'm going to touch on, but uh, Reed Hildebrand, who is the architectural consultant firm, uh, was finally contracted in August. Uh, the driveway, which is referred to as 23A, that contract uh, was awarded, um, I think in August. Um, to Burns and Construction for a total cost of $1.7 million. The work is tentatively going to start uh, in September. Specifically, um, there's a workshop that's going to be hosted um, on the 21st, mm -hmm. and so they'll start right after that. They want to start ripping up the road right when we're having people in for tours and stuff. Uh, Reed Hildebrand gave a presentation at our August meeting, August 21. Uh, they elaborated, they, they uh, elaborated on ideas for access. Um, they talked about how access was their utmost priority. A lot of that's because of feedback. Our, uh, the GIAC um, um, mailbox, <laughs> that's by far uh, the large, the most talked about item is uh, access, all sorts of access. Um, they talked about, talked about different access options uh, and just high level back then uh, on parking options. What they tried to do was show, uh, what they did do was show pocket parking, you know, some places it could be done, but then what they did was they took, if I recall correctly, uh, on a map, you know, a parking lot from Waveney, a parking lot from one of the other beaches and laid it on Great Island. And while we call it Great Island, it is a lot of acres. When you take it from a much larger, from what we think of as comparable parks, some of the parking lots up at Waveney, and you put it on, it, it, you're like, oh my God. Covers so it, it was a good graphic, yeah. because you realize, okay, to get 100 parking spaces is, that's, and, and the idea there was, I think, to start right. to calibrate what types of things and what type of volume it, mm -hmm. on its own it can hand. They talked about ecology. Uh, they reviewed uh, coastal resources. Uh, there was a, a review, initial review of uh, architecture presented by one of their consultants. They, they introduced some high-level ideas about uh, activation and governance, um, and then some examples of uh, like the types of playgrounds that they, they've seen before and some other you know, programs that they've done on you know, similar on. So this is all sort of introductory. Um, then they talked about outreach, and that's where they started talking about having five or six sessions, the first of which uh, was, uh, I, I include the flyer in your package, is coming up on the, on the 21st, I encourage everyone here to go. I encourage everyone here to encourage their neighbors, their, their, their associations to go um, because we've been on them and they've been very responsive to um, so, so gathering how, information. So how, how, how do you go? Sure, so there's two ways to go. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you how to go. Uh, there's going to be a session. The details are in your sheet. I think I have a copy so I can actually read it and not Ad lib here. There's one session here and one session on site, is what I understood. You're correct. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. So September 21st. Here, this one? Morning at yeah, Town I Hall. Yeah, I get <laughs> I get the big blurry eyes. And do you, if, if you go to the on site one, do you have to take the. Um... So I'm going to cover all this right now. Okay. Yeah, there's so, right. so there's two sessions. Great. Okay. Uh, the first session is going to be at Town Hall, 10 15 to noon. And what's going to be presented at Town Hall is intended to be the same thing as what's presented later in the day at Great Island. I think the plan is to put it either adjacent to the, what we call it, the stable, uh -huh. or in the kind of the atrium mm -hmm. of the stable. I'm not sure which they're doing. But the idea is to have the same presentations, the same billboards or you know, uh, boards where they're going to have graphics and stuff about mm -hmm. the ecology, about some ideas as to, but the idea isn't to present their concepts at this stage because it's going to be a multi-facet, multi-step, at least five, four or five workshops. This first one, because I was reading some of the questions, are very open-ended. 
What do you think? What do you like? Um, some education about what's there, presumably to kind of give you context when you answer these questions. But it's very, it's, it's to, to um, entice interaction. So that's, that, so the two sessions are the same. You come to town hall on your own. Um, there is, a res reservations are being made uh, through the GIAC mailbox. It's, it's on the flyer. Um, as of a few days ago, there are over 100 reservations and still 100 available uh, on the buses. They're on the bus. Take buses from, from if, you can if you can walk from there, Hall. are you okay to walk You're there? welcome to walk from your house. Yeah. yeah they'd you know, love you're that. welcome to <laughs> walk from Pear Tree Point. Okay. You're welcome to walk from any legal place you can park. Great. <laughs> 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 okay. okay. so we can mm -hmm. just walk and yep. show up. You don't have to make mm -hmm. a resident. Yeah. Nope. So the presentations and the, inform the same people are going to be at both. Uh, it's going to be staffed by Reed Halo brand staff. I don't know if they're using us <laughs> to do anything, but I do know on, on Great Island there's also going to be tours. Um, if you watch the most recent Great Island meeting, we all know the loop has been open since March or whenever it was. Uh, there's an intention to open up the bridal trail oh, mm -hmm. so um, for additional walking. Uh, and then um, uh, at the last meeting, Reed Hildebrand talked about some of the other, like the field, the horse field, polo field, I'm not sure what the horse field, um, and a couple of other spots. In, I think in front of the mansion. In front of the mansion, yes. Some other areas, they're not open yet, but the, you know. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, they, 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 they took barriers off. I went down to the beach today. You did not. <laughs> uh, yes, I did, they because the barriers are open. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> was like that? Were we being recorded? <laughs> yeah. uh, it was under, I was under the impression that there's cameras everywhere on the island. There, so there, there are. That's been... <laughs> the police come well, I mean, I it, it, looked, it, looked <laughs> it looked like it was open <laughs> again and available. It looked like it was open and available to walk. So, so let me let me help you out, Vincent, so you don't incriminate yourself. So on September twenty first, there's going to be community workshops <laughs> that are open. Gosh, I'm going to come out again. Okay, we can see um, it. Then. I already said that the morning section session will be here. Um, I believe they used the, the auditorium. Um, there's going to be workshop. There's going to be uh, four workshop boards and activity stations, both here and there. The benefit of going to Great Island is you get the tours. And um, what time is yeah. the one on the island? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's all, yeah. It's in your it's in your package. I sent everyone one of these. Oh. Yeah, but just copy, it. take a photo of the whole thing if you want. I definitely read it in the yep. paper or something. Um, the response has been good, That's and to further the outreach because I know this group's been great about communicating from before day one. Um, the idea of outreach, everyone on the GIAC committee was appointed one or two groups in the community to go, like I just reached out to you guys, to reach to your, to your uh, uh, constituents, if you will. Um, and, and people reached out to, let's see if I have all the clubs. Um, the Darien Boat Club was reached out to directly. I think a presentation was made. Um, I got the RTM, of course. Uh, the Yacht Club, the Road and Yacht, the Road and Presbyterian. These are just some random organizations. There was no rhyme or reason to it. It's just who do you know, who do you know, who do you know. Um, and so, but the idea was the Boy Scouts, um, the Men's Club. Uh, I don't know, I can't remember who reached out to the Darien Men's Club. But the idea was you know, no matter how many of these you post, it's in the newsletter, um, the best way to get the word out is to get the word out. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there was, a, in my opinion, a very earnest effort to try to make sure that folks were aware this is going on um, and, that, and that a shuttle service was available because it was very important, at least to me, in my opinion, to make sure that people that can't walk mm -hmm. there because it's far or whatever. And uh, I think, I don't know how long the, um, the, in, the uh, available, availability to book the shuttle has been open. It's been at least a week. Mm -hmm. And the fact yeah. that as of a couple of days ago, there were still a hundred, so nobody, as best I can tell, is being boxed out. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> other things going on. Um, there was a discussion about launching a social media effort again to get the word out um, and establishing a website mm -hmm. uh, with branding. There, which I will get into the details of that. But there's a lot of ideas about branding and start to get its own kind of signature. But um, so we talked about the increased engagement. 
uh, Reed Hildebrand is going to be out there on the 17th through the 19th with architectural surveyors and drones surveying, doing an in-depth survey. I'm not exactly sure what that entails, but that was, that was an announcement that was made so that people don't get concerned. Why are there drones and people walking around with instruments? Um, the planning and zoning met to review the orchard remediation and the decision is expected on that. The orchard remediation high level has to do with covering and capping, covering, cap, I think they call it capping. Um, the arsenic. Yes, at least one of the major sections. Um, bids are due on that on the 19th. And as soon as that's uh, processed, uh, hopefully we'll start uh, shortly thereafter. Um, talked about the buses. And then there was a, uh, you'll read about it, a pop-up event was That's proposed. And so you're gonna love yeah, this, Frank. <laughs> so, yeah, you will. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if it, it was presented at the board of selectmen. Do you know if they approved it? I don't know. I should probably know. But anyway, nonetheless, it was presented. So I'll, I'll share. It yeah, I think, I think I think it was. I feel like I read about it. I think it was happening. Yeah. Not yeah, they just wanted to make sure it wasn't going to cost the town anything. Yeah. So, so, so sure some, some group, uh, I believe from Westport, approached um, members of the G uh, certain members of the GIAC about hosting a, a pop-up event one to five um, in October. The event is, uh, I believe, it's a polo event. They'll be responsible for insurance, responsible for all costs of bringing in whatever they're bringing in, uh, seating the horses, and the cleanup and providing, the idea would be to provide um, transportation, similar to the transportation that was provided in March when we all took bus, people took buses for the tours, mm -hmm. and similar to the buses that um, are gonna be used for, the, for our event on the 21st. Um, so I don't actually know if the Board of Selectmen approved it. I know it was recommended. The GIAC, um, high level, put it forward to the Board of Selectmen to consider. The idea was, um, it's open to Darien residents, unclear as to how many specifically, but I think they were thinking about 200 guests, but it would be open to Darien residents, and it was a way to get people on the island under a different type of circumstance at no cost to the town. Um, so, uh, and you, you all do know, like, let me phrase it, do you all know that there was a, a filming to yeah. Play some mm -hmm. yeah. So, so that was an opportunity. To, there was some revenue generated from that. For mm -hmm. uh, 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 I guess a film company came in and did some filming as part of a series, um, and they were responsible in that case as well for you know the cost, the, the cleanup, of whatever they did for their filming, covering the insurance and things like that as well. So a couple of little items going on. These aren't you know moving the earth as far as revenue, but. Um, just wanted you to be aware, yeah. and it's all been discussed in the GIAC meetings. Um, so that's the update. Um, I suspect I'll be up in front of the RTM in one of the upcoming meetings doing a, a similar type of update. Um, and with that, we are now an hour and 15 minutes. I want to thank everyone <coughs> who came from various events to get here or who had, who had <coughs> conflicts and still came. Um, so thank you. Um, this apparently Thanks wasn't a great day to have it. Um, <laughs> and with that, it's, it, does anyone have anything else? A uh, motion to adjourn. Motion acknowledge. So thank you very much. Uh, All approved for the yep. adjournment. Yep. Thank you. This, this was a great meeting. Thank you. Yeah.